Welcome back. All right, we have Jeff Parker with some updates for Laguna Woods area, as well as COVID numbers. Well, thank you for joining us again. Happy Friday. Happy Friday to you. <laughs> so you've got some numbers, and I know that the governor went on yesterday to, you know, tell us that we're now back to a region, and we were just talking about this, and it's, it's unfortunate that we've gone to a regional situation because, you know, our numbers here locally are looking pretty <clears throat> darn good compared to some other areas. Yeah, and I think it's one of those things that is, is hard for people to watch and, and, and be consistent on. Yeah. But um, to start with the numbers, going back, um, start with Laguna Woods itself. We're at 105 with, um, unfortunately, 10 deaths. But those, you know, we were at 8 and 9 crept up to 10. But what you see on the, on the board is that for the county, our numbers are still way up. And that reflects on the discussion we'll get to in a second about the hospitalization. And wow. So um, 1,100 cases yesterday, um, which is pretty significant. And we've been over that 1,000 uh, three or four times in, since Thanksgiving. So th that's really impact. The correlation, again, we talk about it, is m tests. They'll look at 15,000 reported tests. So yeah. obviously, kind of like that correlation, the more you test, chances are the more positive cases, unfortunately, that we're going to find out about mm -hmm. because people don't sometimes don't even know that they have it. Right. Um, unfortunately, eight reported deaths in the, um, but as you can see, again, kind of highlighting what has always been the seriousness of this, three skilled nursing facilities, five, five assisted. assisted living, yeah. the most at-risk people, um, right. and, the, and probably the most difficult to control in a sense because they get in that environment and right. they're not allowed or can't get out in a sense. Um, so that makes it very, very difficult. Right. Um, the hospitalizations are up again, 735 um, cases in the hospitalization and, and 179 in the ICU. And that leads me into the dialogue that we were talking about before we came on the air about governor came out yesterday and um, was talking about what's going on, not only in Orange County, but what's going on in um, all of the state with regards to the hospitalization. So before I jump to that, I'm gonna go to our rates. As you can see, when we talked last week, we've seen a big jump in our rate cases. We're yeah. at now 22 um, per 100,000. And I think the other one that jumped up a, quite a bit since we last talked was the third one where we're now at 13% positivity rate. Remember, that is looking at the highest kind of zip code areas within Orange County where it is the hot spots really are. And that's showing you that even though here, in, and I'll talk about Laguna Woods, when you look at our zip code, our positivity rate's only at 4.9. Right. Um, so again, we're doing a good job here, yeah. but in the hot spots for Orange, Orange County, they're looking at a 13%, which is right. obviously three times greater. Yeah. Um, and that's pretty serious. One of the other ones that if you, if they, I don't know if they can click on the hospital ICU button down there um, right. is, is what we can talk about. Yeah. So this is, this is where the governor yesterday um, basically came out with um, new orders with regards to kind of stay at home. Here's where we're headed. And it's focused on the numbers on the right there, which is the percent of ICU beds that are available. And basically, he divided the state up into major regions. And one is Southern California. And Southern California basically is from Ventura County all the way down to San Diego County, Imperial County, Riverside County, San Bernardino County, big area. Um, and basically, if we drop below 15% for that region, then this order goes into place, which severely shuts down additional more activities. We're at 17 for the county now. When we start to look at that average, my guess is we're gonna drop below that. Um, so Monday when we're talking, we're probably gonna sit here and go, okay, what does this mean now? Right. And we're already taking a look at that. Probably the biggest impact for the village here is that there clearly won't be any indoor activities. And we, we're already there in a sense. Um, there will be some limitations on the outdoor activities. Right now, um, and one of them, if we have to go in this direction, we'll be back to playing singles and tennis singles and pickleball, mm -hmm. um, singles with golf carts with regards to ridership. Um, those are the type of things that are mandated in that um, mm -hmm. step if we have to go in that direction versus what we're doing. Outdoor activities are still permitted, so okay. that's the good news. We'll still be able to have outdoor things. Um, probably the other one that's a big, but based on that information that we have, 
um, and if this clicks in, in the next couple of days, going forward, we won't be able to have any big group gatherings. So right. the concerts that we've been doing, those type of activities in the future are not going to be able to be scheduled. Right. Uh, and we'll get that information out there if we hit that. Once you're in that category, what he's talking about is three weeks mandatory mm -hmm. um, categorization of that stay at home order. So that would put us obviously until the end of the year. Right. Um, and so we'll be um, talking about that Monday for sure. Um, I don't want to uh, speculate, but um, I know that um, gathering the information that we had um, is anticipated even by the governor's office that out of the five um, statewide uh, groupings, um, four of them are probably going to fall into that category by Monday yeah. and uh, the fifth one later in the week. So that's based right. on this trend. And that goes back when you look at those numbers, it's a seven day trend yeah. and all the numbers have spiked so much and, and uh, hopefully um, people can follow the rules, uh, use a mask, wash their hands and stuff and slow this thing down. Exactly. And, and I, I'm happy to say that he did say get outside, do things outside. I mean, hey, our weather is holding up just nicely here in California. I feel bad for many of the other states who aren't as fortunate. Even in Northern California, it's colder there than it is here. So we're very lucky because we can do many of those outside things. Uh, you and I were talking off camera about how some of the restaurants are sort of accommodating this and they're, they're doing tents and things like that. But, you know, once you get yourself enclosed again, you have to be careful. So if there's a choice, maybe sit outside instead of sitting in the tent. I mean, I hate to say that, but it just you have to be careful. Yeah, and, and, it's, um, and that's where the, um, each county is going to be looking at, at that with, with regards to how they're implementing those state rules because... Um, you know, being outside is critical to, to staying active, being right. able to walk. But um, it, the provision may come down, and I was looking at it, and it's an interpretation. If you're out walking, then you need to be wearing a mask when you're out walking. Mm -hmm. That's a different change if yeah. we go in, fall into that category. So a lot of those are nuances are going to, we'll talk about money, and certainly we'll get that information out. We'll have uh, some more information in the blast um, today. And... One, one of the things that I also wanted to mention is the vaccine. Um, probably have heard that the, it's getting closer and closer. Um, in that same presentation by the governor uh, yesterday, he talked about the first 300 and I think it was 350,000 vaccinations out there that are coming this next week mm -hmm. and how they prioritized it into um, not only a 1A and 1B like we had talked about, but now they have three tiers mm -hmm. in that first category. Okay. Um, and how it's, you know, those first responders, it's the hospitals, hospital workers, um, jail systems, and all of that are going right. to be the very first. We're still in that 1B category. We're still making contact and, and have been reaching out to the task force um, because we want to know, are they going to use, um, what kind of system are they going to yeah. use in getting this out? Are they going to use one that they have set up for other type of vaccines or implementation of medical or are they going to go to one where it's focused on the hospitals clinics mm -hmm. how are they going to do it they haven't right. made a final decision on that right. um, well, once we know that we'll make sure that we get um, our residents informed about yeah, that. I mean we have a lot of people here and distribution is key and depending on how they do that so. yep all right good all right well any any other information well, I just wanted to mention uh, one thing with regards to our, the malware and our getting our computers up. Um, we, we did have uh, this last week, we were um, getting information where we were having some residents who were emailing us and their emails were getting mm, kicked back. Yeah. Um, one of the reasons for that, and, and we're, we're looking at see if there's any other reasons, but we do know that one of the reasons that it happened at first was when we rebuilt our system, we enhanced our security um, because one of the ways in which malware attacks you is by bogus emails that get mm -hmm. through. Mm -hmm. And so we tightened our security with regards to those emails coming in and that unfortunately if they miss one letter or get the period in between a name if they're sending it to our, an employee, that will bounce it back. Mm -hmm. um, because our security is tightened. So we're working with that. We want people, again, continue to send us um, uh, their emails again. Try it again. If you didn't, if you got back, try it again, just in case um, we're, we're, 
we have been able to modify that a little bit, so I think we're getting more in. Okay. Um, but that, that kind of information is helpful if we hear from you. All right, perfect. Yeah, I know there were a few that were trying to get through to us. Okay, well, thank you very much. Have a good weekend. Hopefully, we'll have a little bit better news on, on Monday regarding all of this. But if not, we'll clearly identify it and spell it out for everybody. Sounds great. All right, thank you. Have a good Thank day. you. All right, stay tuned. We have Carl Rendazzo with a United Update. Mm-hmm.